Good everyone, I hope you guys have an amazing day. So in the last episode, I briefly touched upon uh, the uh, sales order management. Um, so that's one of the component, uh, it's a part of a sales force. Uh, that being said, right, you can also use a third party uh, order, sell, um, order management system uh, from App Exchange if you think the Salesforce order management is not something that really fits the purpose. So I can't really show the demo, unfortunately, because I don't have any B2C integrated with the Salesforce. But, uh, and from an example, if you, nobody asks you to, you know, uh, ex nobody expects you to know, you know, in-depth nitty gritty stuff about it. It's just that you need to understand the concept, you know, even if you're using a third party app exchange, right? So, um, like I said, you know, if, when you when you talk about uh, from an order management perspective, right, the first process is to create an order. Obviously, you know, you are a customer. You wanted to request a, let's say, a, a service, or you wanted to buy a product. Then, obviously, you know, from from a vendor perspective, or from a supplier perspective, or from a uh, the, you know. Or from a company perspective, you the first thing you do is to create an order where you pick up the customer information and add the items uh, which customer is interested to buy as a part of the order line items, right? Pretty simple. Now, once that is created, now obviously the order goes through a different life cycle. First of all, order created uh, to the order uh, status getting changed uh, to payment processed. Uh, to or to payment declined or items removed or extra item added or order under process. So different status is right based on what really works for your business. Now, you can view all of this under order summary, which is uh, which pretty much gives you an information about the, the state of an order. Any change you make to the order, everything is reflected there. Uh, because usually if you look at a simple order, right, even from a Salesforce perspective, if you look at a simple order object, all it does is that it gives you information about an order, which is there, right? And if you, oh, yes, you can look at the, the field tracking history to see the changes that happen. But if you wanted to really look at the order summary, you need to, you can do that using order summary option. Yeah. Now, that's great, right? Now, the, the, the main challenge with most of the businesses, right, I don't say it's a challenge. I, I, I take it as an opportunity, right? You should deliver the order on time, right? When you deliver, or you can call it as a fulfillment process, right? You're fulfilling the order request on time. When you fulfill your order request on time, then you are buying your customer loyalty, right? What I mean by that is, right, let's say if I wanted to buy something from a customer, sorry, uh, from a company, and I expect them to deliver stuff on time, right? For instance, I buy a lot of stuff online in New Zealand. I also buy online stuff in Europe, right? Um, so, like for instance, you know, when I when I go and live in uh, places like Italy or, or or Sweden or Germany, right? Uh, I usually use the online shipment uh, to. I usually do online uh, order so that the things get shipped to me on time. The same goes to the stuff I do in New Zealand, because in New Zealand I do most of the stuff online. And I have an expectation that, let's say if I, if I place an order on Monday, I expect the stuff to be delivered to my doorstep, maybe by Wednesday or Thursday, unless the items is not getting shipped from Australia, then it's a different story. So that's where the fulfillment process comes into picture, right? And also what happens, let's say, you know, what normally happens? Uh, we have this store called Warehouse in New Zealand, right? I sometimes buy stuff from them or, you know, I buy stuff from Kmart. Let's take an example of Kmart. Kmart is an American company similar to like what you have Walmart. And I think if you're an American, you will know what Kmart is, right? Uh, so Kmart sells pretty much everything except in New Zealand, they don't uh, ship TVs and other stuff, right? Whereas in the United States, they have more options there. So let's say I wanted to buy you know, a few things from Kmart, right? Let's say my Bluetooth headset, um, say, you know, a dinner set, and let's say, you know, a pair of jeans, right? And tees, right? Okay. Now, 
what might happen when I place an order, right? So the fulfillment process works this way, right? Obviously, the ideal fulfillment process is to make sure that, you know, to assign the order, <clears throat> excuse me, to the nearest location of my address. If provided, if they have uh, the fulfillment place near to my house. If that's the case, the order get routed to there. And now let's say so that it gets shipped to me on time, right? There's no point in, you know, order getting transferred to, let's say, the remotest part of New Zealand where I, where I live in the North Island, right? So it, it makes no sense. So the first thing is that order get routed to the nearest place. And now for, for, for whatever reason, uh, you know, that specific place cannot do the 100% fulfillment of my order, that gets uh, split into different fulfillments, right? Let's say, you know, one items will be shipped from here, other items will be, you know, shipped from here. So, and at the end, you know, might happen is that you get two uh, different, uh, two couriers, you know, coming from different location, or what might happen is that the one store wait for the order to be received from the other fulfillment center so that they can combine everything and ship it to you. So that's pretty simple, right? Let's say, you know, um, if I live in, you know, let's say I live in Wellington, for instance, and if I wanted to, um, if I place an order from uh, Kmart, so most likely it will come from Porto Rua, um, or if they don't do not have an item, which I need, they might wait for an order to come from Auckland or Hamilton. Uh, so once everything is, is in place, they ship the item to me. So that's the fulfillment process. And usually what happens, the store will contact to say, hey, sorry for the delay. We are expecting your items to be arrived perhaps by instead of Thursday by uh, next Monday. So, um, so most likely, you know, businesses try to fulfill the order on time so that they can win the loyalty. Uh, otherwise, you might end up going somewhere else, right? And the payment processing is one, one thing as well. Obviously, before the items get fulfilled, your payment gateway needs to process your payment, right? So usually what happens when you place an order, uh, sometimes, you know, they will block your amount rather than taking it from your card. But when they actually started to process your order, that's where they, they withdraw the money from the card and say, okay, payment is processed, right? So uh, that's why it's very important to understand the order fulfillment process. What I gave you is a very generic uh, information about the order fulfillment process. I have done, I worked with the order management system before. Uh, I was written in C Sharp and I was, I, was, I was a developer back in the day and I did, I built, uh, uh, lots of modules on that, right? And fulfillment is one of them. And so I, I fairly understand how this stuff works. So if you look at it from a Salesforce perspective, right? Um, usually what happens is that you can build your own flow to do all the fulfillment stuff. I do not have anything built, I'm afraid. And that's why I say I can't show you the demo, it's just the theory, just to understand the concept. You can uh, pretty much look at App Exchange, they will have a complete system either by paid or maybe you might find some free you can try it out right depends depending on your business requirement and need so this is something i said the order you know you know you have order order summary then fulfill order one fulfill order two all order products fulfilled and order delivered right that's why i said you know at sometimes what happens is that at one location you won't get the order so usually um combine it once everything's arrived and then ship it right that's why there's one more uh, concept I wanted to cover, uh, just to explain it more better. That is, implement the distributor order management. So, so wait a second. Here, right? This diagram will make it clear, right? Uh, order. You place an order. Yeah. Now, obviously, uh, is the shipment completed? No. Um, is the shipment uh, order is going to... So what happens is, let's say, in a Kmart example, right? 
So I placed an order. Um, so obviously I expect the order to be delivered to Wellington, right? Now I placed four items, right? Now the first thing they were checking, do we have all the necessary items, all the four products in the Wellington branch so that we can ship it to this guy address, right, in Wellington? If the answer to that is yes, it's pretty sweet, you they gonna fulfill the shipping process, right? No problem. But let's say if for whatever reason you don't have that every product, like you 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 only got let's say Bluetooth, you don't have rest of the items in Wellington branch. So it goes to the next stage. So what are you gonna do? You contact the nearest uh, Kmart branch and say, hey, we want these items. Do you guys have it? Okay. And if they say yes, and so you know all this will be combined and will be shipped. If the answer to that question is no, we only got two items, whereas the last item we still don't have it. So what will happen, the store will contact another location to say, hey, we are looking for, let's say, uh, two pairs of jeans, right? Do you have it? And if the store says yes, so now you can see the three shipping locations are brought into equation to ship four or five items, whatever, right, the question. So that's how usually in a distributed order, order management works. And it's it's very, very common though, right? Um, and you will be surprised, most of the big friendship, uh, most of the big uh, companies, they do this uh, process. Right, and that's where the proximity where routing all comes into question. So I, I summarized everything in a simple way. So I hope that's clear. That's pretty much I wanted to cover from an order management system, right? Like I said, you create an order, then obviously your order needs to be fulfilled, right? So fulfill means you have to ship the order. Now the shipping works in a different way, like, like I explained here. You may not be able to find everything in one place, so obviously the business will um, try to reach out to the nearby branch to say, hey, we need these two products. Do you guys have it? If they say yes, bring it on send it to us, or you can ship it from your end, and we'll ship this item from our end, whichever works, right? Whichever process they have in place. So it's like collaborating between different branches to ship a single order. That often happens, especially you might have seen during the Christmas time, where you, you know where people all do a lot of online order, and what might happen is that you might order 20 stuff, right? Out of 20, you might get, let's say, five, this week and rest of the 15 next week. So the five this week might be coming from your nearest branch and the 15 might be coming from some other branch. So that's how the distributor order management system works from an overview perspective. I hope that's clear, very simple to understand. And like I said, I cannot show you the demo, unfortunately. My apologies for that. Um, but that being said, if you really wanted to play around with it, you can look at some app exchange free product and start playing around with it. Uh, that being said, I hope you guys have an amazing uh, Monday. Adios.